Hunter x Hunter episode 91. The strong X and the and X the weak. <laughs> Gross. Pregnancy. <laughs> uh, bro, I'm not even ready for you yet. I'm still hung up on Nefropito and the other two. Yuppie and the other one. What were the director's instructions for this scene? You're a big ant. <laughs> You're giving birth. What? Did the fetus just tell her mom to shut up? Childbirth. What a miracle. Oh, they got the cell tail. And the cell ass. Ass again. Oh, and he's got a cute little hat. <laughs> oh, all right. He looks like Crocodile Dundee had a baby with the crocodile. Yeah, par for the course. Change in management, but same incompetence. The queen was queen queen dead? That's the end of Peggy. He's a tyrant. Something about the way his face is drawn that reminds me of Demon Slayer. That apex though. What a kiss ass. Good! <laughs> That's what happens to kiss asses around here. Colt rethinking which uh which species he has an allegiance to. It's been five seconds, bro. The whole crew about to switch sides. I cannot bring myself to care. There's a little guy. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, she knows her assignment. The humans? Bisky? Well, nah, it's too late for Bisky. Bisky can come in and help them with their constipation issues. Alright, he's just out there. Awkward. So majestic. So elegant. Oh, he has wings too, right? Yeah. He just decided to have wings. So it was. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he means salt. Yeah, it's just been alive for a while. It's just like been in a sack. Time is up for Netero and the other two, and the world. Your calculations are maybe not, not so correct. Bringing a white flag. Can you imagine? The shock of this? This is terrifying on a lot of really obvious levels. One thing that also comes to mind is comparing this episode to the last episode, where Gon and Kalua are battling themselves. You know who isn't battling themselves and what they want and what they'll do? The ants, the king and the three royal guard. I don't see them sitting around worrying about their own personal issues and demons, to say nothing of power levels. <laughs> What do you do in this situation? You, you just do nothing, right? You, you don't help the queen. That was a costly mistake. This is the episode where I lost my favorite character, the intellectual penguin. Look at what you've done. You can't even fly. Is he flying or falling with style? Run, children! Run, chil run, children, run. Uh, 
these two might end up saving a lot of humans because he's gonna eat them and find them tasteless. Yeah, maybe don't kill any anyone. Breaking more rules. Breaking all the rules. You can't kill kids. Why don't I keep focusing on his ass? The show is not for kids. <laughs> Only the most mature audiences can appreciate the show. Japanese children. I was wondering when that was coming. I was surprised he didn't do that sooner. But it speaks to her power that she survived that. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Your head didn't smush. Yeah, every time she's addressed him up until now, I was thinking, you just can't talk to someone like this because they enjoy the act of attacking. So they're, they're going to use anything as an excuse. They'll just filter whatever your intent is down to like, you deserve to be slapped with my tail and beheaded. I mean, as almost everyone probably knows who's ever had a, a terrible boss or tyrannical parent or just a bad friend who's looking to take you down. You can't really deal with those people healthily because whatever you do will be filtered through their very specific lens, which will be designed around taking any input and boiling it down to the output they want, which is beheading you with their tail because they enjoy it. I didn't say that out loud because I was thinking Nefropito is too important of a character to be dispatched, not considering the idea that she's strong enough to survive an attempted tail whip beheading. <laughs> Imagine trying to live your life in the world as a chimera. Big world out there. Lots to see and do and explore, especially with Nen. There was a time when some of these characters seemed relevant. That all went out the window with Neverpito. I wasn't aware they were capable of that. That's a game changer. Other species? Yeah, they're the ultimate procreating animal. I mean, if Velociraptors can do it. Very plausible that he kills him. Interesting that Kurt cares about the safety of the ecosystem in the world. Is that what it is? I'm like not sure what's motivating him right now. Is it loyalty to the queen? That is a big thing for him, but that seems to be out the window. We're about to find out the outcome. Whoa, we just skipped it. I guess we'll, we'll get it in flashbacks. Good. This is what I want. So what is the cat? No. I'm having flashbacks of what I said last time. I don't necessarily want Knuckle to be here, though I think purely from the perspective of that training arc, this is the most heartwarming and best solution, and maybe even Netero's plan. Like, going thinking about saving Kite, I mean, you can lose a lot more than you can gain here. Oh, or is it that are Gon and Clue actually conceding here? Are they letting the two of them go in? And if that's the case, they're definitely dead. It hurts, but I also feel like it's productive overall. Depending on how this is processed. Man, the feelings of powerlessness. I know the feeling. This is how vows are made. Oh, they're just leaving. Wow. What is the cat? Oh, it's the no nen curse. Wow, that's a long time. Get back on the horse. Psych! No way. 
that helps no one. I guess credit to Kalua for upholding his end of the bargain, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. I really felt Gon's breakdown, like I've talked about a whole bunch. I increasingly think so much of contentment with one's own life is dependent on to what extent one feels like they have leverage over the world towards things that they most desire or need. Gon up to this point has been very capable of setting his sights on something and jumping into it, figuring things out on the fly and coming out maybe not with a total victory, but a victory in a very key sense for him emotionally in terms of that was his target right like i'm i'm gonna punch a soak in the face this is his first time experiencing abject failure and it's in uh, an area or towards a goal that is of real critical emotional importance to him which is saving kite that kind of powerlessness Taking Bisky's visual, you being convinced that you are the A-line and you're trying to defeat the D-line, but the top of your A-line doesn't even come close to the bottom of the D-line. And all you can do is watch in despair as the thing you want with all your heart slips away from you, with no guarantee that you'll ever get it back or be able to get what you want in that department, is one of the most earth-shattering and depressing things you can experience. From there, I think there are multiple ways to look at it. One is to do the common thing, I would argue the destructive thing, of taking that as some intrinsic property of yourself that the state you're in now, your incompetencies, let's call them, or weaknesses are a fixed trait that you were born with or is your lot in life as I've so often heard it put. And that this one incident is indicative of everything you could ever possibly hope for and dream to achieve. Or you can see it for what I think it really is, which is information into this current snapshot of this moment in time, which is brutal truth that you're not what you thought you were, but now at least you know what the scale is and you know where you are on the scale and you know more clearly what you have to do. And furthermore, hopefully, if you have this kind of raw state or raw emotion, you have a lot of kinetic energy that can be burned off and used as fuel towards reaching the bottom or maybe even surpassing that D-line. Knowing Gon, I think that's how he comes back from this, but it's going to be a hell of a long 30 days.